Welcome to Ingrid's World. My name is Ingrid Paris Hicklin. On this show, you get to meet Andrew Holden, who has been in the food industry since he was in high school. He always knew what he wanted to do. And after successfully launching his catering company, The Joy of Eating, he was searching for a restaurant to base his business out of. And then he came upon the Cedar Knoll. The Cedar Knoll features waterfront dining and sits on the land once owned by George Washington. So help me welcome Andrew Holden to the show. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, Ingrid. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you, and it's smelling good. Well, thank you. So you have some things here, but I want you to first tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, as you can see, I'm a Nats fan. I love baseball. Love played it. baseball as a kid and um, still love watching it. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can, as you've said already, I have a love of cooking that's um, gone on through most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid, I used to cook with grandma and mom and help for family gatherings and things like that. And when you get home from school and mom's still at work cooking for siblings and we would have fun to see what kind of things we could find in the, the uh, kitchen to make pizza out of or <laughs> really? whatever. Yeah, just fun things like that. Um, <clears throat> I just have a, a six month old. Um, his name's Franklin. Oh, so beautiful. that's life changing. It is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's growing up so Okay, fast. so why didn't I have sons like you? <laughs> okay. Mine always like, okay, so what are we going to eat? Okay. So what inspired you to start a restaurant? Well, to be honest, I never wanted a restaurant until I saw Cedar Knoll. Oh I enjoyed gosh. catering and doing events and banquets and things like that. Um, I liked working in the hotel. Um, and um, until I saw Cedar Knoll, I didn't really want a restaurant wow. because as a business owner, you don't know if people are going to walk in your door and try mm. your food or in, and enjoy mm. your establishment. Um, but when I saw Cedar Knoll, I knew that that was a good opportunity. That was a place for you. Yeah. So what do you have going on here? It looks like some good things yeah, here. These are our sweet potato duck crepes. So we um, take sweet potatoes and put them, put them in the crepe mixture that we make at Cedar Knoll. Oh. And we smoke the duck breast and we uh, make a duck confit. There's a lot of elements to this dish, actually. Wow. Um, so all the, the items are prepped here, but um, there's a lot that goes into each of them. This is a little um, Savoy cabbage slaw. There's mustard seed, uh, rice vinegar, sugar, and salt in there. Yummy. And we have um, toasted pistachios that have been chopped. We have our goat cheese mousse, which is whipped with heavy cream. It's uh, goat cheese, heavy cream, salt, and pepper whipped oh. together. Oh my goodness. We have duck confit, which is um, cooked in its own fat for a couple hours until it pulls apart, similar oh. to barbecue, but it's duck. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a maple pepper bacon. And mm. this is our cherry port wine, rosemary, and ginger sauce. Oh my and goodness. And so we reduce cherries with port and ginger and a little sugar and some salt. Oh my goodness. Rosemary. Mm -hmm. So how did you get the, I mean, everything looks so beautiful. First of all, paper thin, those are crepes, and yeah. they're paper thin. Mm -hmm. oh Non-stick pan, um, your batter's gonna be really thin, you put a little bit in and you just kind of work your pan around until it spreads out. Ah, that's mm -hmm. the trick to it. That's the trick. Did you say sweet potato? Yeah, that's right. Oh my goodness. Sweet potatoes and duck are a classic combination, so. Um, Who knew? I've had a dish for a while and it's sort it's got sort of like a, a breakfast kind of nod to it where you had where I had sweet potato pancakes and all the other elements and I just wanted to kind of refresh the dish and I since mm. we kind of do some French and American um, influenced cuisine at Cedar Knoll I thought it would be appropriate to do it as a crepe. Well as you now what other dish are you going to fix? I'm going to fix some uh, clams. Okay. Here. All right. And so I'll go ahead and get this pan hot. All right. And while that's heating up, we can uh, do a few, a few things. So you're we'll heating go ahead up and the pan. Throw some toasted bread in the oven. So, so yeah. I was mentioning when I was doing the research. Um, so Cedar Knoll is actually the home of George Washington. What's the connection with George Washington? Yeah. So Cedar Knoll is on River Farm, and River Farm was one of the five farms of the. Washington estate and plantation known as Mount Vernon. Wow. And uh, over the years, um, they've sold off 
pieces of the land and it's become residential property. Wow. In fact, Cedar Knoll is residential, but it has a special use permit to be uh -huh. used as a restaurant that dates back to the 40s. Dates back to the 40s. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah. So, so it sits there and we're showing some pictures from the Cedar Knoll and you have particular rooms that are in there. You Me have too. like a, the Lafayette mm -hmm. room. That's right. And that's so, our large banquet room. Oh, that's genius. We have a lot of weddings and events there. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And then you have a presidential room? That's correct, yeah. Ah. That's our, our middle room. It's kind of meant to look like an 18th or 19th century parlor. We have some booths, and it's all overlooking the water. Oh. Booths, large chandeliers, uh, dark oak paneling. That's beautiful. Yeah. It really is. And our viewers are going to get a chance to see that. And then what's the last room that you have? The so there's the room? botanical room. The botanical mm -hmm. room. I think I ate in that botanical room. Yeah, That's what's like my friends mm -hmm. were telling me and said, well, maybe I just see the know. I'm like, well, I remember seeing it a little, long time ago. But I said, like, that's great. I said, yeah. okay, well, I'm in. So that's mm -hmm. wonderful. So, um, so what's the theme of the seasonal? What type of cuisine are you focused on? Well, we decided to bring elements of French and American cuisine together. Nice, nice. And the reasoning for that was because we're on Washington's property. Yes. Um, and we have a lot of great regional ingredients here. Mm -hmm. It makes sense for us to strive for great American style cooking. Wonderful. Wonderful. And the French element comes from the relationship between the Marquis Lafayette and Lafayette. George Washington. Makes and, sense. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there you have the name of the room. Right. So you're getting so that going. So we've got a going. pan hot here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We're going to start with a little olive oil and some pearl onions. Might take a little longer to get this pan hot, but that's okay pearl onions and we've got some fingerling potatoes that have already been blanched so they're okay. pretty much par cooked. Par cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to remember everything that you're doing here because that's going to be I'm gonna well, I guess I'm pretending to think that I'm gonna be able to duplicate something like this. Oh you certainly can. <laughs> no about that, but and then we have some smoked prosciutto mm. here that's been diced up. All these elements will get hot together and um, start to cook a little further. And pearl onions, that's, mm -hmm. oh, those are onions. Yeah, those are wow. onions, little tiny onions, and um, they have to be peeled too, just like mm. a large onion would. You cut the tops and bottoms off there. Wow, mm -hmm. I hear it sizzling. I'm starting to. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then, mm -hmm. um, and that's actually going to be like a dish that you're making? Yeah. How so um, once this gets hot and starts to cook, then we're going to go ahead and add um, some chanterelle mushrooms. Ooh. You don't need much of the salt, which I brought. Salt and pepper goes in just about everything. The reason that we don't need much salt is because you have the smoked prosciutto, and then we're going to add the clams as well. So it already has mm -hmm. the good seasoning in there. Yeah, and even the white wine that we're going to use mm -hmm. in the cooking, mm -hmm. um, once it reduces, it's going to have a salty element to it as well. Wow. But we will add some pepper. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. We're going to kind of let this cook just a little bit um, until it starts to get brown. So where do you get a lot of your food? Mm -hmm. Where do you buy a lot we of your food? We buy it from a lot of local providers. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Local produce companies. Nice. Mm -hmm. Local oh. seafood companies. Um, sometimes, you know, um, different watermen who just stop by and, and say, you know, we've harvested some oysters. Would you like to try? or We've caught some wow. fish, you know, would you like to try? And we've hmm. developed relationships with people that we trust and know that the quality of their products are going to do really well on our restaurant. Wow, that's yeah. really good. So you can come there and, you know, you might be in for us a chef's surprise. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. And, um, you know, we even grow some of, of our um, vegetables and herbs there at Cedar Knoll. When I was looking at some of the pictures, mm -hmm. I said, that looks like it's just a garden. Yeah. So you uh, actually have a garden. So, yeah, we call that one room where you had lunch the botanical room. Okay. Uh, because we have, you know, all kinds of plants and flowers outside. I, I was looking mm -hmm. at and it. And some of those things we do use in our cooking. Oh, my word. That's, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, Washington and, and Mount Vernon have a long history of farming. Oh, yeah. And yes. so since we're on what was once a called River Farm, 
it seems to make sense. It would make have, sense, mm -hmm. you know. Oh my goodness. So, how many customers do you have like on a given day? You know? Well, you know, sometimes on a Tuesday night we might only have 20 or 25 guests. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. on Fridays and Saturdays we could have anywhere from 100 to 200. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah. Sounds like reservations are key. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, because we do a lot of weddings and events and sometimes we have um, have to close the restaurant to, okay. uh, to the public for those private events. Wow. So if you call ahead, you'll be able to know when, when you can come in. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so we have our uh, potatoes, our prosciutto, and our pearl onions going here. We're going to go ahead and add these chanterelle mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Now what's the nice earthy chanterelle? Mushroom. Those are earth mushrooms. Yeah, most mushrooms have that earthiness to them. You but, know, um, and, and I hope really our viewers mushrooms. can just notice the real risk and act. <laughs> I mean, if I try to do that, I'd have all food all over the place. I remember the first time a chef uh, told me how to do this and, and he told me to practice with uh, just dry beans in a pan. I don't know if that's a very common thing. Okay. But, yeah. You know, of course, when you do that, things will go flying from time to time. <laughs> Yeah, but look at how, oh, it's beautiful and the color is nice. This is an interesting ingredient too. Um, we roasted oyster mushrooms until they got dry and crispy and then you let them cool off. They almost taste like bacon. Um, but what we did was we ground that into a powder. Oh my And then goodness. we used that to flavor this broth. Mmm, yummy. And it smells so good. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and add our clams now. These are little neck clams. Little neck clams. Little neck clams. So I, I mean, I love clams. I'm a little afraid of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How do you, how do you select a, a good clam? Well, you want to make sure they're closed. If it, if it's open, you can kind of tap on the shell, and if it closes, then it's good. These clams are still alive, and you want that. Oh. Of course, they're not going to be alive very soon, shortly. Um, but you want them to be alive when you're they cooking them. Must That's how you know that they're closed. fresh. Okay, so they must be mm -hmm. closed. Okay. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and pour our white wine in there. Mm-hmm. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a nice dry, crisp wine with some citrus notes to it. Oh my goodness. Which will pair nicely with the clams. Nice. Yum yum. <laughs> And then uh, maybe just a little bit more here. And then we'll close this up and let them steam. Okay. Oh, so that's why the other pan yeah. was there. Because I was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's going to be using two pans. So but actually, that closes it like that. It's like a little lid. Why do you choose to do that as opposed to like putting another, like something on top of it, another like a lid? Well, this is what we have available to us. Typically in the restaurant, we'll have all of our pans oh. there. And um, so we'll just Does it grab enhance another pan. Flavor it really doesn't make a difference. Um, <clears throat> it's just what's, a, what's ready for us to, to grab it in the moment. See, and I'm, I'm a big fan of using pans. I call them seasoned mm -hmm. because I have pans that look like this. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like the best mm -hmm. food comes out of those pans. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, when you buy these pans, um, you have to season them before you use them. Other thing, otherwise, everything's going to get stuck to them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. They like... recommend putting a bunch of oil on both sides and then putting them in a high heat oven. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I just usually <laughs> yeah. cook a lot on them and finally they're, they're fine. But oh my goodness, mm, smells heavenly. Oh, thank you. Yeah, normally this takes only just a few minutes to, to, uh, to steam them. We're going to add just a touch of cream and some butter to finish okay, it. Okay, okay. And then we'll go ahead and place them in the bowl and garnish. You can see one of them starting oh, to open a little bit. Oh my goodness. So, so the trick is you're waiting mm -hmm. until they open up Once a little. Once they open, yeah. You don't want to let them cook too much after they've opened because you can overcook them. Okay. Um, okay. The meat will start to shrink and get a little tougher. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness, that looks wonderful. That is beautiful. We can check on our bread here. Oh my goodness. 
And this is a bread that we make at Cedar Knoll, and I've just put a little bit so of that's olive oil. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh and we my. We sliced it and then put some olive oil, salt, and pepper on there. Beautiful. Um, because we'll have a bunch of juice in our bowl that we'll want to sop up with some bread. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the trick to it. Yeah, I love having that. So, okay, so you have that. And then what did you, you were basting it, like, you, was this a butter? Yeah, that, that was you? the olive oil. Mm -hmm. oh, that Same was stuff olive that we used oil. here in the, the pan, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So you're not introducing really anything really that's contrary. It's just like a real nice blend. Mm -hmm. mm, that makes it so good. Yeah, you know, if you start with really good ingredients, then um, you can kind of keep things simple. Yeah, and what I notice is that everything is really very fresh, you know. Um, oh, my goodness. So, so what tips do you have, like, for me? I mean, I love good food. I like eating good food, but, mm -hmm. and I like to cook, too. What tips do you have for a cook such as myself? Well, <clears throat> it depends on if you want to impress yourself or your guests. Um, you impress have, myself. <laughs> okay, if you want to impress yourself, you just got to keep on working at it okay. until you've done that. But um, I, my recommendation is to kind of know your audience. Mm. So if you, if you know yourself well and you know what you like, then mm -hmm, continue mm -hmm. to cook that and mm -hmm. seek out new things and wanting to make each dish better every time. What's your favorite thing to fix? It's always whatever my next dish is. You know, <laughs> coming up with something new is is part of the excitement for me coming up oh. with something new that that works well because oh there goodness. are dishes that are failures and wow yeah. i so. can't imagine you fixing anything that's a <laughs> failure Andrew. it happens <laughs> oh so my the clams goodness. are open we're going to add a splash of the cream here and a splash of the or a little bit of butter you don't need very much of that and we'll just kind of close this back up let all that so we can just turn it off now at this point, and um, we'll go ahead and present our dishes. And present it, mm -hmm. and you also have we're going to have dessert too. That's right. All right. We could get that started too if if you'd like. Yes, please. Okay. So while those uh, clams are finishing up, <clears throat> we can um, start one of my favorite desserts, which is uh, panna cotta. Okay. Panna cotta. Let's start bringing some ingredients over. We have a pot here. Panna cotta <clears throat> is an Italian dish, mm -hmm. which means cooked cream. Cooked cream. And so we have three cups of cream here. Mm -hmm. This will make enough for about six people. Okay. Six or eight. Okay. Depending on the size of your portion. So we're going to let our cream start to simmer there. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we'll take some unflavored gelatin. Okay. And we'll sprinkle that over some water here. Wow. That's one tablespoon of gelatin. Okay. We'll go ahead and just mix that just to make sure that all the dry parts get moistened there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll let that just sit there and set up. Wow. Mm -hmm. Inside of our cream, we're going to add brown sugar for this particular style of panna cotta. What I like about panna cotta mm -hmm. is that it's so versatile. Oh wow. You can flavor it any way you want. Mm -hmm. So for this one, this is a chai, <coughs> this is a chai tea. Mm -hmm. This will be a chai tea um, flavored panna cotta. Okay. So we have chai brown tea. sugar, we have cream, mm -hmm. we have um, some black tea here. Three. Oh, I can really put the tea in there? We, yeah, we'll put the tea in there. Three oh sachets. My gosh. We have cinnamon sticks. Oh my goodness. We have cardamom. Oh. And then we have some cloves and black pepper as well. We'll put all that in there. Oh, wow. In its whole form because we're going to strain it later anyways. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And what, we just want to let all that sugar in there dissolve. Okay. We don't okay. need to boil it. In fact, you're not supposed to boil it. Um, you just want to let it get hot. Um, our clams are ready here, so we okay. can go ahead and present those. We're going to present those? Mm -hmm. I guess we have a dish there. Yeah, so I'll pull that closer. So in terms oh of goodness. how to present a dish like this, you might want to start 
with uh, your base, which would be, you know, the potatoes. Oh, okay. And the uh, mushrooms, the prosciutto. You know, since the clams are the feature of your dish, you would probably want to put those on top. Oh, that's how it goes. And then goes. just kind of arrange those. Um, th any dish that has clams that are still in their shell, I would consider to be s sort of rustic in a way. So your presentation does not have to be refined or anything like Okay. I would consider the duck crepes there to be a little yeah, bit more Yeah, the duck crepes was, was like artwork. Oh yeah, the presentation is wonderful. And then of course it's really important to get some broth in there, which we're going to go ahead and pour a little bit of Oh my goodness, it looks heavenly. There. It really doesn't matter how you arrange things. And then you can really elevate the dish with something simple like celery leaves. If you get stalks of celery and you have them in your in your, um, I was wondering what, yeah. what was going to happen with the celery. Just to brighten up the plate a little bit. Oh, it just gives you that mm -hmm. pop of little color. pop of color, exactly, yeah. And you can just kind of randomly place those in there. I think oh, it looks better beautiful. when you do it that way. It's a beautiful dish. Well, thank it you. It really and then is. I think um, one of the best ingredients here is just straightforward, and you pour a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc with it. Okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> that's what I don't want. Now it's complete. <laughs> now it's complete, yeah. yay. And let the tasting begin, okay. And okay, and we have this to taste too. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to finish one of those um, for you? Yes, please. Or you can have this one for yourself. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. Would you like a fork? Yes, please. Okay, great, here we are. Thanks. Of course. Mmm, this is we looks heavenly. Get our bread over here too. Of course, a little piece of our toast to go with that. Oh my goodness. Okay, and the crepe is so wonderful. Thank you. Mmm. The duck just melts in your mouth. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. So your recipes, do you have recipes on your website? Um, <clears throat> where do we, are, are these chairs? Are these, are <laughs> you have to chefs, break into the kitchen. Or the chefs, um, <laughs> we have a book in there. Uh, either that or you can um, kidnap one of the other cooks there. And, okay. But um, most of the stuff are we, we get inspiration from different chefs and cookbooks and things like that and ingredients that we like and sometimes I'm even inspired by a dish, you know, that I might find it at an antique shop or something like that. Mm, and I'll show you a beautiful. prime example of that when we present the panna cotta here. But a lot of times when we get inspiration from, mm -hmm. you know, things we see, you know, whether it be in a cookbook or on TV or something, typically we put our own signature mm -hmm. spin on it. And this is on top of it. What is this? Oh, that is a, a pickled Savoy cabbage. Pickled. It's wonderful. Thank you. Wow. And there's the, the goat cheese mousse as well. The goat cheese, everything is so good. So here with our, our panna cotta, all we're mm -hmm. looking to do is to dissolve the sugar that's in there mm. and also the gelatin, which I just added. Once the gelatin set up, you throw that in here with the rest of your ingredients and just let the let that cook for just a little bit. So we have a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. So we want to um, try to taste, we want to taste this. If yeah, you'd absolutely. like to taste this. And maybe what we can do, we can pause for a moment and uh, why don't we just stop here and then we're going to come right back over here and we'll have a, a chance to, ha to have something to eat. Sounds good. Oh, Andrew, look at all this great <laughs> food here. Oh my goodness. So, all right, I'm really anxious to taste this. And now what's the name of this dish? Well, we just simply call it um, Little Neck Clams with mm. uh, mushrooms and prosciutto. Oh my goodness. Melts in your mouth. Thank you. Mm. And I guess the reason why I really even love it because the thing is, is that it is fresh. It's fresh and we know exactly how it's being made. I'm loving it. Oh my goodness. Wow. 
the potato potatoes okay if you could just share one secret with me I really love potatoes how mm -hmm. did you get the potatoes just so right well we cut them in equal sizes that way when you cook them they come out all the same mm. so they cook at the same rate cook at the same mm -hmm. rate so equal sizes and then um, what I like to do is blanch them first. So oh, okay. um, in this case, because these are smaller, more tender potatoes, mm -hmm. we'll start off with boiling water, throw our potatoes in there for a few minutes, pull them out, and then hit them with ice water mm. so that they stop the cooking process right away. And then after that, you can cook them in any way you want. I love it. It's delicious. I taste the clam heavenly. Thank and you. And now for the dessert. Mm -hmm. That's a vanilla spice cake there. And that goes with the panna cotta that we were making. That's oh a, my goodness. A chai tea flavored panna cotta. There's Do you pour it over it? Uh, actually, no, we have a little it. spoon here that you can... Um, okay, and what do you do? Yeah, just go ahead and dig it in there and uh, grab a little out. That pairs nicely with the cake. Wow. Okay, so Andrew, thank you so much for being on the show. The food is heavenly. I just Thank cannot you. get over how delicious this is. Thank you. Um, our closing inspirational look, because I always have a good closing. This one is from Julia Child. You don't have to cook fancy or complicated masterpieces, just good food from fresh ingredients. Thank you for watching Ingrid's World, and don't forget to friend us on Facebook and follow Ingrid's World VA on Twitter and Instagram. And if you miss the show, you know what to do. Watch Ingrid's World on YouTube or Ingrid'sWorld.org. Thanks for watching.